You know, thanks for reminding me of that game. I wondered what happened since last time I played. Then I was like, oh yeah, Iris wanted to hit up the bar. No idea why. Anyway, hey there guys, my name is Nix and welcome back to I, The Somnium Files. Last time, since this kid sat in front of us, we got his ending. And what a heartwarming scene that was. Even if I still don't know who the serial killer is. All I know is it's not him or his mom. So that's a good omen. It's, and it's not so because he died it anyway. So... What? Oda, what have you done with Mama? Oh, she left a little while ago. She said something about going to help an acquaintance. Okay. She told me to watch the place until she got back. How well do you know Mama? Not at all. It's my first time here. Well, weren't you surprised? I wasn't particularly surprised. Mama's always dependent on the kindness of stran strangers ever since she opened Marble. Is your phone still fucked? No, this is my new one. Well, you didn't waste any time, did you? You're thinking of the one I dropped in that puddle. Yep. Never thought I'd run into you here. I was niling with Tessa earlier. She said she was going to Marble, so... I got here just before you did. Look, I was really worried about her. She was about to be charged with a serious crime. It ain't my department to charge people. So what is that thing? This actually works out nicely. I want to ask you something, Ota. Well, technically I know what that thing is, but... It's about a Nile message you sent Iris. You said you wouldn't tell anyone about that thing. Am I about to get smacked around the head again? That you'd stay quiet no matter what. What were you talking about? Well, uh... This is the thing where we saw Tessa driving Renju's car, I think? I'll tell her about the two witter thing. I swear I'll do it. Jeez, fine. Just don't tell anyone else, okay? But before I tell you, who's that? You ain't pulling a fast one on- Well, I feel like you are about to pull a fast one on me. What? At the door. Someone's standing outside. Yeah, he's pulling a fast one. Where do you get all these things from? Also, maybe you are the serial killer. Oh shit, he shut down Iper. I don't even have footage of this one. Monday. Where the hell am I? Mama, am I okay? I'm still at marble. That's a good sign. When I woke up, I was lying on the sofa. Where am I? My head was killing me and my memory was foggy. I felt a sudden pain in my neck. Hi, Mama. I shut up, rubbing my neck. When I looked over the counter, I saw a monster staring back at me. It took me a few seconds before I realized it was Mama. It looks like you're awake now. As Mama spoke to me, it all came rushing back. I remembered everything. <sighs> Time is it? Even though it just said it was like nearly three o'clock. It'll be three o'clock soon. Yeah. In the morning, of course. How did I get here? I can't remember. Uh, why didn't you wake me up? I tried. You wouldn't budge. I thought you were passed out drunk, so I left you like that. Oh, gee, thanks. But I didn't have a glass in front of me, right? So you weren't drunk? Didn't have a single drop. Motherfucker tased me. No, oh, I thought you were drinking straight out of the bottle. Just like the old days. Oh, I wish. Ota, the boy I asked to watch the bar? I'd say he's too old to be called a boy, but yeah. No, this is Mama. She can call him what he wants. He was already gone when I came back. 
All I saw was you getting your beauty sleep on the floor. Damn it, Ota. What are you thinking? I wonder. It appears that he took off with Iris. Oh, you're alive! What were you doing during all this? My power was shut down due to the stun gun. I have rebooted in safe mode and am now operational. Can we just appreciate Ota's, like, kung fu moves while we're having this conversation? Oh, God. Bo the boss is calling. I was about to say, I'm about to get roasted by the boss. Oh, how am I going to report this one? Date, listen. Stay calm, but this is an emergency. Are we about to see an Iris missing her eyes again? Just now, the killer... Well, just watch the video. I sent the address to Iba. Yep, we're doing this again. I wish I can catch him this time. I'm not gonna lie, this this serial killer's got some good uh, cinematography no, skills. That's... The criminal is streaming this live. Iba, the source. That's even more impressive. Identify. The Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse, Koto District. Okay, so that's the same. Okiura? Date, focus. We need to get to the site now. Thanks. I thanked Mom and ran out of marble. What's our ETA? Our destination is far from here. Oh, Christ, of course it is. 20 minutes at the fastest. Please, please let me make it in time. I doubt we will. I'm just watching this to see if it's the same. Sick bastard. I want to see if, like, Ota comes in and punches a polar bear. Or if Iris actually just gets killed. I'm still fully believing that that polar bear is too tall to be Ota. Tessa! Hold on! I'll save you! Ota? Who is this goddamn polar bear? I kept my foot on the gas the whole time. I can feel the sweat on my palms. The engine raised a high-pitched scream. But I could barely hear it. My heartbeat was panning in my ears, shaking me to my core. How much time had passed? The feeling of time itself had disappeared. Eventually, the car reached a long bridge. Shortly after, the image changed. No, it can't be. No. Stop! Oh, Yeah, that's about the way I'd sum it up, Iba. No! No, I'd probably be more depressed if I hadn't already seen this once in a timeline where she survived. But hey, ho, life goes on. Nice, p nice drift.
Well, this is interesting. You know, I was about to say, oh, thank Christ, but that's a dick thing to say. So, Iris is fine? We've got dead Ota instead? I don't know. There you are. Finally. I was looking all over for you. It's rare to see you down like this. Yeah, Date, Date looks like he's been through some shit. But it's understandable. It looks like Mizuki at the start of this game. You blame yourself for this, don't you? Beating yourself up about taking Iris to marble. And about letting Ota get the upper hand on you. Am I right? Shall I tell you what Investigation HQ thinks? Sure. Ota Matsushita is a criminal stalker who committed murder-suicide. Ota had a selfish love for Iris. He was under the delusion that Iris loved him too. But Iris refused Ota. So Ota decided that he and Iris should be together in the afterlife, killed her, then killed himself. Yeah, but that ain't Ota. That's a problem. That's ridiculous. Ota would never kill Iris. And how do you explain the other two murders? Iris's left eye was hollowed out. Mm-hmm. Just like Renju and Shoko. Those three murders were definitely executed by the same person. And it wasn't Ota, at least I'm assuming. The new Cyclops killer. There's no way that's Ota. Too many pieces don't fit. Too many contradictions, like killing Iris. Such as? <sighs> I do want to ask about the polar bear costume, because that's confusing me more than anything. The culprit was wearing a polar bear costume, probably to hide their identity. But if murder-suicide was the plan, the costume served no purpose. He did also fight off the polar bear and try to save her, but I still feel like that video is staged to an extent. Stay away from Tessa! Ota showed himself on the stream. If he was going to kill Iris and then himself, why would he do that? The only reason you would show yourself like that is to prove that you weren't the culprit. Ah. Hmm. I mean, I don't know if either of these two kids are smart enough to come up with that idea, considering, you know, I haven't really had a good chance to talk to Iris. Ota and the polar bear on the screen at the same time would prove that they're not the same person. But they were never on screen at the same time. That behavior would be totally unnecessary if he was going to commit suicide anyway. Well, maybe he wasn't planning on dying at first. After he killed Iris, he realized that he couldn't live with himself. So he lies down on the workbench and turns on the ice cutting machine himself? Unlikely. I don't buy it. Yeah, why would he kill Renju or Shoko? Maybe he was thinking like this. The reason Iris and I can't be together is because her agency prohibits it. Making the president, Renju, the ultimate bad guy in his mind. Mizuki is Ota's close friend. Do you really think Ota would kill his friend's father? Hmm. And yeah, also there's Shoko. Shoko was married to Renju. Maybe he was trying to get at Renju by killing her. They didn't give a shit. That's a stretch. They've been divorced for years. Ota knows all about it. He wouldn't use Shoko to get to Renju. He'd use Mizuki. 
There are some additional discrepancies. Go on, Iba. I analyzed the investigation report. Judging by his wound, Ota was stabbed in the side by a kitchen knife or something similar. Oh, we're bringing it back. Are you sure? I am. I told the boss what Iba found. Oh, I know that. Well? Ota could have stabbed himself. Maybe he thought it would be a fatal wound, but when it didn't work, he went for the ice cutting machine. Is it? I'm trying to figure out if it's the floral knife in this timeline as well. Because at this point, I don't think Iris would have had that knife. Then shouldn't we have recovered the kitchen knife from the scene? Maybe he threw it in the ocean. Boss, come on. Ota goes out to the water, stabs himself in the gut, throws the knife over the side, then walks back to the warehouse? And then pulls the lever on the cutting machine? Well, I wasn't being serious. I didn't think Ota was the culprit from the beginning. I was just playing devil's advocate for HQ. Ah, fuck them. Really? Yes, really. Anyway, Ota didn't kill anyone, and he didn't kill himself. Here's what I think happened. Stay away from Tessa! Ota knew Iris was kidnapped, so he rushed onto the scene. That's when he saw the culprit wearing the polar bear costume. He tried to fight him off, but ended up being stabbed in the side. He was weakened and losing blood at the culprit's mercy. The culprit forced him into the costume, then under the ice cutting machine. And then... Yeah, the rest is history. Then, who is the culprit? I wish I knew. We're up to four victims. But Ota was a special circumstance. He wasn't specifically targeted by the culprit. Right. And he was the only one to not have his eye pulled out. So let's focus on the three other victims. Shoko, Renju, and Iris. What connects these three? Connections. If you find a connection between the victims, you find a connection to the culprit. That's the theory of investigation, right? Mm-hmm. You think the new Cyclops killer is related to them somehow? Maybe it's Iris's mom. I don't fucking know. Maybe, maybe not. That is a good starting point. Oh, to no, we've had that discussion. It's probably not the mafia. It's not. Ma nope, it's Iris's mom. Hitomi and Renju are definitely linked. They were high school classmates, and she did say that she met Shoko twice. But I can't imagine she would kill Iris in such a gruesome way. I don't know, psychopaths are, well, that. No matter what the circumstances were, it seems impossible to me. Okay. So then we got, let me just go through all these. In least likely order. Mizuki has the strongest connections with all three victims. And is the strongest of all the people here. Shoko and Renji were her parents, and she was close friends with Iris. Yeah, which is exactly why she wouldn't kill any of them. She was good friends with Ota, too. But that's why I could never believe Mizuki would kill all four of them. Thinking of her as a suspect is ridiculous. Okay, so we got Ota's mom and the Mafia. The Yakuza, even. Mayumi had motive for killing Iris and Renju. Mayumi hated Iris, and she didn't think well of Lemna's Gate, either. Mm-hmm. And since Renju is the president... Anyway, the weak point is Renju's ex-wife, Shoko. I can't imagine why Mayumi would kill her. And above all else, she would never harm her only son, let alone kill him. So we've only got Momo... Momo Kumakura. Renju and Shoko were connected to the Kumakuras, but there's no connection to Iris. Ah, uh, there's... there's the final one! Renju, Shoko, and So. There is a connection between Renju and Shoko through the Kumakuras. But again, I can't see any clear link to Iris. <laughs> yeah, me! What? I'm the Cyclops killer of old! I know Renju and Shoko. And I'm connected to Iris. But I have an alibi. Aside from Shoko, there's no way I could have killed any of them. No. Now that I think about it, Shoko too. I don't remember killing her. 
My memories from six years ago are missing, but I still have my memory of recent events. Also, Iba would have definitely caught all of this on camera. And if I start doubting myself now... <laughs> this is when Date just goes down and thinks, well, Oh god, what if I am the killer? Date, I can say without a doubt that there is zero possibility you are the new Cyclops killer. But I'm the old one. I have been working with you for years. I know better than anyone that you are innocent. I thought it over, boss. Of the people I know, I can't peg any of them as the murderer. And no leads to pursue? No. Other than me? Then there's only one thing you can do. Somnium? Continue your investigation. Ah. Uh -huh. Do whatever it takes to get the culprit. To get justice for the victims. You're right. Got it, boss. Well, we got all these places to hit up. So let's just go in order, shall we? God, this scene is grisly. Bear pun not intended, but appreciated all the same. I stepped back into the cold storage warehouse. The air conditioning wasn't running, but it was still cold. The temperature hadn't raged mu the temperature hadn't raised much at all. The cold air sunk into my skin. But at the center of my the center of my body was burning hot. Ugh. There's a cardboard box on the floor. There's nothing in it. God damn it, Oda. Why couldn't things have played out slightly more favorable? Alright. You got anything? Uh, no, nothing so far. Ah. If I can't even talk to him like to be funny at this point. Well, this is probably where Ota was stabbed. If I remember it correctly. Iris and Ota were sliced in two by the ice cutting machine. Iris and Ota. Iris's estimated time of death and cause of death have been confirmed. The video was not a recording. It was a live stream filmed in real time. Which means Iris's time of death is 3.20 a.m. So, yeah, we're still waiting on Ota, aren't we? Iris and Ota's blood. Yeesh. Iris also had her left eye removed. Yeah. And like Renju and Shoko, Iris's left eyeball has not been recovered. See, now I know that Shoko's eyeball is in Renju, but... You know, saying that doesn't make it any less weird. Nope, nothing unusual about the ice cutting machine. Right here. Iris and Ota were. I am sure you are already aware of Ota's time of death. Just before I arrived. About 3.30 in the morning. And the cause of death. Right, about that. The saw or the knife? Ota had a stab wound from a kitchen knife in his side. Correct. What was the exact cause of death? Was it the knife wound or...? I cannot determine that. Oh, God damn it, Iba. I can conclude that the knife wound was at least close to being fatal. Even if Ota was still alive on the workbench, he was certainly on the verge of death. If he weren't already extremely weak, we would expect to see more signs of struggle. So he was close to being dead by the time he got on the workbench. Maybe Ota was trying to help Iris, jumping at the criminal. That led to a scuffle, and Ota ended up with a knife wound in his side. He lost all his power to fight back. He was forcibly put inside the costume, and finally cut open by the ice cutting machine. But why? Yeah, that's the big question right now. Why did the culprit put the costume on Ota? Unknown. Uh, Iris and Ota's bodies are under autopsy. The bodies aren't here anymore. <sighs> A video camera and laptop. This is what the criminal used to stream. I'm impressed it got covered in blood. All of these items have been bought from pawn shops and thrift stores. It would be difficult to determine a suspect from them. Well, shit. I have logged into the Wi-Fi in this warehouse. 
This White House has Wi-Fi? Oki Ura Fishery Co. Ltd. is listed as the owner. However, I found the password written directly on the router. Anyone who saw it could have used it. God damn it. I have done some research. As the name suggests, the company is owned by the Okiuras. The same Okiuras we know. Renju's father created the company. Mm-hmm. Another connection to Renju. No, actually. Currently, Okiura Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. It's his dad. The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Renju holds no shares and is not involved in the management. In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father, and it was instead given to other persons. But it can't be a coincidence. It certainly is suspicious. Date, we should get moving. I was gonna uh, talk to the other policeman, but sure. Officers from the local jurisdiction are checking the warehouse thoroughly. We will not find anything of importance here. Yeah, you're right. You can ask CSI to inform you if they find anything. All right. So, any progress? I checked this place point by point, but didn't find nothing. Why is it the same two police guys that man every crime scene? Well, I'm heading out. Let me know if you find anything. I let them know and then left the warehouse. Got stuff going on outside. When I left the warehouse, I saw Pewter. What is he doing here? He walked up to me while I was trying to work it out. Date, I have to talk to you about something. Huh? About the original Cyclops serial killings. Oh, finally someone's gonna tell me about them. Why this all of a sudden? Because I want you to solve this case, Mr. Date. I want you to find who did this and bring them to justice. So, if I can help you, even a little. Why didn't you say anything at Abyss? Ka, <laughs> would you bring on boss's wrath? The boss was there. I couldn't speak openly in front of her. So, I decided to meet you here. Yeah, seems fair. All right, let's hear it. Earlier, I told you that I was completely certain the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. Let me just look at the log because I skipped over one there. Okay, so it was just Date being like, okay, it's not ma nothing major. I am absolutely certain the original Cyclops killer could not have committed these crimes. Because I'm 99% sure it was me. Let me explain why. I'll start by telling you the identity of the Cyclops killer. Although, it's more accurate to say, killers. More than one? In the first series of killings, the culprit had an accomplice. One of them was born a murderous psychopath. There, this is what we saw in Iris's head, red man and blue man. The other is Rohan Kumakura, the previous chairman of the Kumakuras. They each had a role to play. The murderer committed the homicide, and Rohan removed the eyeball. How do you know this, Pewter? So about Rohan, I hear he died of a heart attack. Eighteen years ago, Rohan took a woman's eye. She was already dead. He put his finger into her eye socket and gouged it out. The reason why was simple. He was fascinated by women's eyes. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, thank you. I just noticed the description we've got here. Yeah, here's just a floating eyeball in the dark. No biggie. Their beauty stimulated his greed and his desire to possess them. I'm not gonna lie. Eyeballs weird me the fuck out, but... He needed to have them. To make them his own. Like, like look at this picture. This is disturbing on several levels. I'm glad I have two of them, but I don't want to see them out of anyone's skull. 
Driven by this instinctive impulse, he took the woman's eye. From then on, he acquired a grotesque obsession with the eyes of dead women. He was very particular about his need that the eye belonged to a deceased woman. That's kind of like recycling, isn't it? But even being the head of a Yakuza gang, there weren't too many opportunities for him to indulge. His deepest, darkest desire went unfulfilled for years. And then the Cyclops killer came along. However, he soon met his ideal partner, the aforementioned psychopath. The Cyclops killer would commit the murder, and Rohan would take the eye. Thus, a mutually beneficial relationship was established. This was the origin of the Cyclops serial killings. At about the same time, you were assigned to Abyss. Huh. So, do we know this murderous psychopath? He was born with a brain dysfunction. Due to damage to the posterior pituitary gland, he was unable to properly secrete oxytocin. Oxytocin is a peptide hormone linked to feelings of love, affection, and trust. So, he couldn't feel any of those things, okay. It is colloquially referred to as the love hormone. It causes a tranquilizing effect which improves mood and relieves stress. It is normally secreted when the body makes contact with an object of affection, such as an embrace or caress. I'm sure you know what this implies, but... He was unable to feel love in the way that we do. However, he was able to experience a substitute. His brain was wired in such a way that allowed him to feel satisfaction through other means. Due to the unique idiosyncrasies of his brain, he was able to release large amounts of dopamine and endorphins by performing a certain action. That's killing things, isn't it? What was it? Murder. Yep. Dopamine is a hormone linked to the reward system of the brain. The pleasant feeling attained through accomplishment is dopamine. Endorphins are a kind of brain narcotic. They dull pain and create a feeling of happiness. He got pleasure from killing people? It's slightly more complicated than that. Killing people was the only way he could get pleasure. He was 12 when he took his first life. Jesus Christ! That enlightened him to the pleasure of murder, which he would do again and again. So, why'd the government take this off my hands, even though I'm 90% sure because the pieces kinda line up? That, I don't know. The details of the original Cyclops serial killings case have become nebulous over time. Even the official investigation material contains nothing of value. Like, it makes sense if it was me and Soshijima said he was my dad. That he would, sque he would sweep this under the rug. Just so his appearance, like, he has a son that's also a serial killer. Yeah, that's not good for a politician. I am unable to draw any conclusions from them. Like, those pieces line up, and if that's the- I feel like that's the most likely cause of this. Oh, not cause. Eh, could be cause. You really have no idea? If I did, I would tell you. So, sum it up in, like, five words. The original Cyclops killer had an accomplice. There were two Cyclops killers. Red Man and Blue Man! And one of them was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. Rohan committed suicide by jumping to his death one year ago. That means... Pewter. Tell me this. I knew he was dead. I just got the thing wrong. One of the original killers is dead, I know that. But that means one remains. Who is he? The mas- uh, the, not the masochist, the psychopath. After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. They actually picked him up on other charges. <laughs> That's always the case with serial killers. But, in any case, he is currently serving a life sentence in Fuchu Prison. Fuchu Prison? Yes. What's his name? In prison, he doesn't have a name. He is simply called Number 89. Number 89? I know who killed Shogun Adami. The man on the phone! 
So, now you know why I said that. That the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. You know, unless they got the wrong man. Because one is dead, and the other is behind bars. Neither of them had the opportunity. Pewter looks grimly serious. Well, I feel like this is another place I've got to head up at some point, but in the meantime, let's check off all these others. Gotta go check in with Oda's mom. The place was silent. It was so quiet I could hear- I felt like I could hear the floating of dust. I stepped inside. I thought it was empty, but in this- but I saw a shadow in the corner of my eye. It was Mayumi. It was like watching a decaying old tree cling pathetically to the earth. I'm sorry to interrupt. About Ota? I feel like she's not in a mood to- yeah. I say I feel like she's not in a mood to talk. This is your fault. I heard from the police. Because you didn't take care of Iris. My boy Ota got involved. Date, I looked into the investigation report. Please but tell me you're about to say it's not my fault, Iba, because that's what I need right now. Mayumi confirmed Ota's body early this morning. I see. I'm sorry. I want to be alone right now. Yeah, I figured. Did you not hear me? I said leave! <laughs> Date, let's go. Mm-hmm. She is in no state to talk. Yeah, you're right. Oh, boy. Here's hoping Mizuki doesn't blame me for this as well. Mizuki is curled up on the sofa. She looks like a small animal frightened by a predator. <sighs> yep, this is uh, what I imagined. Mizuki must know about Iris and Ota. Of course. The news was distributed heavily across the internet. Not just in Japan, but worldwide. Three days ago, Mizuki discovered her mother's body. Two days ago, her father's. This morning, two of her best friends. It is completely understandable that she is at her mental limit. Can I be left alone for a while? Are you okay? Does she look okay, Date? Yeah. She certainly didn't seem so. But I can't stay by her side forever. Iba, contact Abyss. See if they can get Mizuki a good counselor. Understood. I stayed with her for a little while, but we didn't speak. Having nothing more to say, I left. Well, at least I didn't get accused this time. When I visited the Sagan household, I found Hitomi with a hollow look in her eyes. She let me in and asked me to sit on the sofa. I agreed and sat down. But after that, I couldn't say a single word. The heavy silence weighed on us both. <sighs> About Iris. Iris was my everything. We always went everywhere together. Whether it was buying clothes, or going to the movies, or taking a walk, or going shopping at the supermarket. 
when she was young, she would just hold one of my fingers. Her hand was too small to hold mine. Then it was two, then three, and finally she could hold my hand. But eventually, she left my hands altogether. She started crossing her arms, being independent, even though she needed constant attention growing up. Her memories are a part of this room. And always will be. When she was a baby, she fell off that sofa and cried and cried. One day, she tore up her picture book all over the floor here. <laughs> Another time, she drew with crayons all over the window. <laughs> she painted my portrait on Mother's Day. Scratches on the floor, chipped plates, burn marks on the table, stains on the cushions. <laughs> Everything you see. <laughs> it all holds a memory of her. <laughs> but... Why? I wish I could answer that. Did you know anything about Ota? Ota was one of my students. I taught him in elementary school. I heard it from the police. Ota tried to help Iris and ended up... I don't know what to say. I have no words. Can you think of anything? Hitomi, my entire focus is on this case. Is there anything at all you can tell me? I don't know if this is important, but... No, please, tell me. I may have told you this already. I met Renju's wife Shoko twice before. The first time at the wedding. The second time a month ago. That second time was in the waiting room of the prison. Prison? There's an acquaintance of mine from when we were younger. I swear to God, it better not be number 89. I visit them a few times a year. And by coincidence, I saw Shoko. I don't think she noticed me, but I recognized her as Renju's wife right away. She was there for the same reason I was, to visit one of the inmates. Do you know who? No, I don't. We didn't talk. Which prison? Fuchu Prison. In Tokyo. God damn it, it's gonna be this number 89. Fuchu. Prison? I'm sorry to have bothered you. I'll be going now. Uh, I don't know what to do. Thinking about her. Dante, please, you, you have to catch them. Please, please. Trust me. <laughs> well, I feel like we've got one stop before we head to prison. Are you okay, honey? No. It's been one hell of a day, and everyone around me is crying. Please help. Huh? About last night. Oh, there was that as well. Well, at three in the morning, anyway. You know about it? It's on every channel. You have the face of a ghost. Do you want a glass? I've got to drive home, Mama, so no. I don't need a drink. I need information. Do you have anything? Well, let's see. I do have... I suppose you could call it intuition. 
Ah, it's never done me wrong before. Let's hear it. Tell me. Tell me your intuition. We've all heard about mine. The Kumakuras are involved in this case. You don't say. Remember what I told you before? That there's a relationship between Ren and the Kumakuras? Shoko also has a relationship with them. You know about her dealings with the Kumakuras, right? So basically, two of the victims are linked to the Kumakuras. That must mean they're involved somehow, right? Not two. Three. Three? How did Iris know them? Iris? No, not that one. The boy. That's even more surprising, actually. He came here last night? Ota? Yes, from Matsushita Diner. He's linked to the Kumakuras as well. Okay, please enlighten me. Have you heard the rumor? Which one? Mama told me a similar story to Iba's. About Sosajima in the Kabasaki district. The basic idea is this. Eight years ago, Sol sold his land in the Kawasaki district for 30 billion yen. Half a year later, an explosion at the chemical plant caused the land prices to drop drastically. So bought back the land for 1 billion yen. Almost like he knew beforehand that the accident would happen. Did So blow it up, or conspire to blow it up? Nah, that wouldn't make sense. So I wouldn't gain anything from that. We're gonna end up with 29 billion in cash and 1 billion in land. It's a net zero. But there's more to the story. The Kumakuras own a handful of real estate companies. They of course look legit, but they're Yakuza fronts. I'll call those real estate companies the KE to keep it simple for you. Okay. The KE followed in So's footsteps. They bought up land in Kabasaki. Okay, keep going, Mama. Now, back to So. Have you heard of the plans for the casino in Kabasaki? No. So was the one who came up with it. I is was it? born and raised in Kabasaki. Not to go on a tangent, but isn't gambling like hardcore illegal in Japan? I remember the landscape of my childhood. And I loved it dearly. But look at Kabasaki now. It's a nuclear wasteland. When I see images of the destruction on television, my heart aches like it's being chopped to pieces. But I promise you, I will revive the Kabasaki district at any cost. Casino Town Kabasaki will give new life to the city. After that, so moved fast. He submitted the bills he needed to the National Assembly after drumming up support in the right places. The bills passed, and it became an official government initiative. That oh, must not be if, they're, if they're, it's a government-funded thing. Decontamination efforts therefore increased at a rapid pace in the Kawasaki district. At the moment, the area is still considered off-limits. However, the air in Kawasaki is currently purified to such an extent that it has no negative effect on the human body. Which is why we were there. If the plan goes smoothly, land prices in Kabasaki are going to skyrocket. Okay, so now it's making sense. And all that land is owned by the KE. And by So himself. The land he bought back for one billion will be worth ten times that soon. He's involved in some shady business. Ah, aren't most politicians. This is just another rumor, but the chemical plant exploding was no accident. It was done intentionally. I feel like anyone could have told me that and I would have believed them. By so in the Kumakuras, you mean? Yeah, probably. But there's no hard evidence of that. It's just gossip. Ugh. <sighs> What were we talking about again? No idea, but please keep telling me about So. Ota and the Kumakuras. Oh, right. You know how Matsushita Diner is close to the Kabasaki district? Yes. Wasn't them that they owed the all the money to, was it? The explosion made times hard. 
Foot traffic went down, sales declined. No wonder it closed down. Ota must hold a grudge. Someone caused that explosion. And if it was intentional, oh, he'd hate them even more. That's how I link Ota to the Kumakuras. Huh. Well, it's been enlightening, Mama. Thank you, Mama. I don't know if what you told me will lead to anything, but... Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to waste your time. Nah, nah, it's all cool. No, no, it was very helpful. I'm glad I can help, even if it's just a little. Well then, be seeing you. Come back anytime. Oh, don't worry, I'll probably be back. If only because I uh, struggle to get leads. Well, let's check in with boss and see if she gives me the okay to go to prison. <laughs>